Have you ever talked about what a student of yours can't do in the classroom? They can't read that paragraph. They can't do that homework. They can't do the group activity. This focus on what students can't do is deficit mindset, and it's a key element to understanding ableism. Simply, ableism is when there's an inherent bias against people with a disability. And that takes many forms that we all have internalized. As a special education teacher, like, I'm, I often think about the ways in which I have been ableist in the day. And that's true. Because I think, like, as an educator, especially a special education teacher, like, you have to be self-reflective all the time about how you're projecting in space. Ableism assumes that typical abilities are superior and that people with a disability need fixing. A lot of these biases can be directed toward physical disabilities, but also mental disabilities, learning disabilities, or even something like a language barrier. It's really easy in school um, to, to like segregate students based on ability levels, even if you're trying not to, right? So like when you're talking about inclusive classrooms, it's like, well, what does inclusion look like? It's not enough just to have students with disabilities sitting in your classroom. How are we as teachers, both SPED, gen ed teachers, and schools, like really actively helping those students to engage socially and with the, with the material? There's like all kinds of cool things you can do, but it's not enough just to, to put them in there and then to give them a small group in the back of the room. That's, that's, not, that's not enough. Socially engaging education is something Jeremy is doing to give students some agency over their learning, allowing the students to understand how they can contribute to a given lesson with one another. So like some of the students with intellectual disabilities were being overhelped, so they weren't really learning the skills that they needed to learn for independence. We really have to get them to see themselves as equals and to, and to have everybody else see them as like co-equal partners. So one of the things we did was is we approached uh, a couple of the students, one in particular with Down syndrome, and asked him to lead what we call community circle, where he would work and discuss with all the other students uh, around the ideas of disability, but also more importantly, it was focused on like the idea of weakness and strengths. So we worked with him for a little bit to get the presentation going, but really he talked about what it meant for him to have Down syndrome, you know, he's taking over the defining moment about his disability. He's, you know, he's prideful about it and sharing about it. And then, more importantly, he's talking about what he feels he has strengths in and where he needs help and how they can help him. And then, this is where it flips. Then he led a discussion with all the other students where they, they had to answer to each other about, well, where, where are their strengths? Where are their weaknesses? Where can they be helped? Where can they be supported? And so it was a really awesome moment where like all these other students who were trying to figure out how to help him realized really quickly that like, oh, he can tell us what he needs. And oh, and by the way, something that he might be really good at is something that I struggle with. Remember that deficit mindset? By looking at strengths and using asset-based language, students can find ways to engage rather than simply identifying ways they cannot. This new way of thinking allows one to also see ability on a spectrum rather than in absolutes. We all have neurological profiles. We all learn differently. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And everybody brings value to that space and can help each other out. Um, and I think like what's really cool about those types of moments is that students really begin to understand the action of inclusion, which is like, this is an act. We actively talk and interact with each other. We actively see the value and strengths of people with disabilities. And we view them as co-equals in our democracy. And I think like that's what inclusive education ultimately is about. We want all people, all students to understand that our diversity is a, is a value and an asset, and it's gonna help us create like a more equitable democracy. Creating an inclusive mindset will allow for a learning environment where students of all abilities can participate. It's simply up to the teacher to communicate and model what that participation will look like. You can say, hey, look everybody, Azul's going to come up today and she's going to share with us something that she worked on over the weekend, right? Azul might not be able to communicate in the typical way, but Azul can be present and in that space. And you can show them things that they like to do within the space that they're good at. Sometimes it might be drawing, sometimes it might be like, I don't know, like dancing. 
I'm not going to define the student by what they can't do. I'm going to define the student by what their uniqueness is, what their unique talents are, what are the, what are the different neurological ways in which this student learns that can enrich my own classroom. Demonstrating to your students these differences in ability can go a long way to removing the biases that make up an ableistic classroom. If we try to, as teachers, like reframe the idea of special education or having a disability as being shameful, but as normal and also part of being humans, and in many ways like makes you super cool and really unique. I think like that would help too with just like students when they get older being able to actively advocate and feel confident in advocating for themselves. And I think like that starts early on with like Gen Ed and SPEB teachers talking about what they're seeing and, and, and like really supporting students and helping students advocate for themselves. What are some changes you could make to eliminate ableism in your classroom?